and uh, I am Papa Bear Leon, and we also have um, Maria Goldilocks Gondarillas right there, and we have Mama Bear Layla, and Baby Bear is Michael, Jeff, and Sheesh. So, uh, all right here. You can bear us. So, um, the two products... <laughs> so, the two, the two products that we created, number one, we have this awesome presentation uh, with actual pictures and uh, drawings. The other thing, that on, your, on your tables in the middle, we've prepared a white paper from our Goldilocks Consulting Group. So uh, please read that as you travel back or read that right now. So those are our two products. And uh, for us, we want to create Agile at Scale or think about Agile at Scale. We want you to consider that in a smart way. And we'll detail out what that means. But also that it's just right. So uh, we want Agile at Scale to be just right. We're going to uh, just uh, delve into that, especially in a smart way. So, and for smart, for us, means um, that you consider the speed of your scaling, that you consider the maturity, that you consider alignment, especially alignment to the organization, that you consider the roles, and especially the roles that are going to be key in scaling, um, and also transformation, um, things that the organization is going to have to transform. So those are, these are the considerations that we want you to consider when you're scaling. And I'll hand it off to Maria to talk about speed. And for speed, one of the, those are a few things that we want to consider. That is the size of the organization and the type of projects that they have. Do we want to go with a gradual or a big bang approach to scaling? If we have an organization that you have small projects that are limited cross-functional, then you probably want to go with all the teams at the same time go full blast with it. If you have many cross-functional teams, large projects, you want to do it gradual, preferably up to a pilot, and then from this software management method is the way to go. Also, if you have a small backlog with a small technical debt, you want to go big bang, do it all in. But if you have a large backlog with large technical debt, you want to go very gradual, very slow, with this implementation. You want to consider also the, where the position of the company is. Are we a new market? Are we in survival mode? Are we a, are we a big competitor in what we do? The grassroots, how big is, how easy would it be for the teams to adopt? And how about the buy-in of our management? We also want to consider, are, are they skeptical? Are they, or do we run, you know, a big risk in going with this new method. And the last thing that we wanted to consider was we want to do it all. If we do it all at the same time, are we going to be uniform or is it going to be inconsistent if we do it very quickly? And with this, I will pass it on to Mike for Yeah. Actually, I'm the mature one. So, um, are you? <laughs> amazingly, right? On our team. So for maturity, there are two big pieces of maturity. Number one is the add the maturity model that you want to use for consideration um, when you think about scaling. So if you're a very immature organization, like you know Howard would say, you know, you're not even doing add in the small, not necessarily a good idea to go ahead and scale right away. Think about where you are, where your maturity is. So where's your, where are you on maturity? You want to do as much scaling as the organization can bear. So um, the other thing is you want to think about the scaling approach um, and the model, right? So don't just say, hey, we're just going to do safe because we like safe. It's got a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> think about um, your, uh, your organization, the history there, right? What do you have available? Do you have anybody that knows anything about that scaling approach? And then think about um, you know, internal, external coaching. Um, who do you have internally? Who can you bring internally to help you with this? All right, and we're going to talk about alignment. Let's talk about alignment. So for alignment, there's certain areas that we need to gain some actual physical alignment. Uh, we need to gain the alignment of our stakeholders and sponsors. Now the buy-in and trust from this group is going to be critical. They need to know how they fit into the overall structure and what role they're going to play. And they're the ones that need to enable an environment of autonomy and yet uh, you know, shared accountability. We also need to gain the alignment of our business and IT organizations. Uh, now this group really needs to come together as one unit and operate in unison. Each has an important role to play 
individually across the whole system, but together um, that partnership and that collaboration is going to be more valuable than the sum of just the individual parts. Hi, I'm Jeff Brummel. I'm going to be talking about the alignment. So we have the bottom part of that is the alignment two. And this one is really around key topics around the common vision. We want to make sure that this is not only tops down, but also bottoms up. And in the ideal world, this would be a situation where you actually can dovetail those. And folks should know from their end user perspective, I call it the with them, what's in it for me, they should know how they fit into that common vision. That's the best case scenario. We also talked about some of the common methodology. This would be considering how you are going to use some of your vernacular. Uh, does everyone know what an, uh, an FLA is? Four letter acronym? Did anybody guess what a TLA is? Three letter acronym? You want to make sure that those are spelled out. So taxonomies can be very important. You want to be very consistent in how you're rolling things out with the group. And then the last piece is the common processes. I think a lot of groups um, are very good once you get from execution down, but I think it's that intake and that ideation realization process to make sure that you're having a process for getting those good ideas in, assessing them, and then helping to build those business cases, get those estimates developed so you can make those informed decisions with the business cases. So at this point, passing on to Layla for roles. All right, so I'm Layla. I'm the Director of Business Development and Strategic Planning sometimes a PM one day might not be a scrum master the very next day. Um, we have to work on defining exactly like what a product owner is and versus a project product manager. Um, next we have uh, role flexibility. We need to be open to change. Um, things can be crazy when you're scaling and uh, growing quickly and fast. Um, we just need extra understanding and be open to uh, additional coaching and education. Um, and when we talk about uh, specific role considerations, we have um, re release coordination, coordination and agile program management staffs, um, middle, ma middle management executives. These are some new roles that may be introduced into your organization that previously weren't there. Um, <coughs> So, those are some considerations. Hi, I'm um, Ashish, and uh, let's see, I'm going to flip this over. So, the last uh, letter in the mnemonic uh, SMART is transformation. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things uh, you want to consider here is um, obviously the most obvious question would be why, you, you know, why are you scaling? Are you scaling because your CIO or CTO friend did it, so you have to do it? Or is there a real um, idea behind why you want to scale? Right? Um, you know, some of the things you may also consider is uh, how is this going to make your organization different, better? Uh, and if you can paint that picture uh, to the organization, then there's a greater buy-in. Uh, and, and people will buy into the fact that they have to change so many things along the way as you scale. Um, the other thing to consider is, I think it's already been mentioned in a couple of other points uh, by my teammates, is whether um, have you done Agile in the small case. You know, If you have a team, you have a, a division, then you start scaling that either, either into other business units or across the enter uh, enterprise. If you don't have those experiences in-house, the scaling part is going to be a little bit more difficult. You may have a lot of extra work to do to get that. Um, the other pattern that, that we think uh, is going to be useful is, is when you scale is kind of uh, establishing communities of practices. Uh, communities of practices. Uh, community of practices could be around roles. So when you introduce new roles, it's important for those roles to come together, uh, create some uh, new good practices, practices, share those out, and do some peer, peer learning. And then I'm going to just lastly put a very a small point on uh, organization change itself. Uh, the leaders are going to have to make a lot of uh, uh, fundamental change on how they do business, you know, whether it's organization design <coughs> or changing uh, 
from a command and control to more people centric. All right. So uh, sorry, we've only uh, barely scratched the surface of uh, scaling, but we do want you to bear in mind um, that you know just by following the recipe doesn't mean that you'll get good porridge. Um, so. That's what we want to leave you with. Please check out our white paper or brown bear paper that's on your tables. And thank you very much.